A major drought is currently affecting California, and it is unclear when it will cease. California may have seen the driest three years on record, but the state is also currently experiencing significant flooding. While over 100,000 residents are without power, millions of residents are still surveying the damage. Little of it makes sense. How is it possible for there to be both droughts and floods in one area at the same time? In this video, we'll examine this peculiar predicament and the enormous mega dam that the state plans to build to remedy it. But first, we must discuss California's water situation. California faces challenges when it comes to water. The Great Basin, the Mojave, and the Colorado are deserts in significant portions of the state. A couple hundred years ago, when the first Americans entered the area, there was so little water that farming the land was difficult. Nowadays, not much has changed. The governor of California proclaimed a drought emergency for the whole state on October 2021. In an effort to get things back on track, he urged the populace to use 15% less water. But the emergency is still in place in 2023, some eight months later. California has been officially in a drought for more than a thousand days. But this only tells a portion of the tale. Smack dab in the heart of this protracted drought. Parts of California saw significant flooding during a period of exceptionally strong rainfall. Cities and towns suffered damage. The governor proclaimed another state of emergency after 22 people were slain. The state is currently experiencing both emergency droughts and emergency floods at the same time. But how is it possible for California to be in two different states of emergency at once? Management of water is the answer. In times of intense rain, a significant amount of water falls to the ground, flooding the area. However, only a small portion is correctly gathered and stored. Most of the water either drains away or pours out to sea by the time the sun shines again. It is as if the rain never fell and the drought just continues. That is the predicament California is in. They are unable to save enough water during the rainy season to make up for the dry spells. They swing back and forth, instead from floods to drought in a never-ending cycle. The crucial query is whether California is capable of taking action. They tried in the 1950s. The state water project was launched when the state made the decision that enough was enough. The water project's straightforward objective was to find a mechanism to store water during floods so that it could be recycled during dry spells. They constructed more than 20 dams in the first two years, enabling them to store water in sizable reservoirs during seasons of intense rainfall. Probably the most well-known is Lake Orville, the reservoir located behind the Orville Dam. The actual dam is the biggest in all of America. Standing more than 200 meters tall, and the reservoir is filled to capacity with hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. Pyramid Lake, a well-known illustration, is located not far from Los Angeles. When there is a drought, these enormous reservoirs can store water that may be delivered to cities and farmers. It is a remarkable feat of engineering that makes use of a vast system of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some of the water flows across mountain ranges for hundreds of kilometers. The California Aqueduct, which runs from the Sierra Nevada all the way to Los Angeles and branches out to provide water to millions of people along the way, is the most well-known part. The Edmondson Pumping Plant eventually needs to lift this water 600 meters over the turbulent mountain, similar to attempting to pump a river over one World Trade Center. The Edmondson Pumping Station is the highest lifting pumping station in the world. Its water management system is among the most sophisticated and comprehensive in the entire world. However, it was only intended to be stage one while it was being built in the 1960s and 1970s. In the 1980s and 1990s, there were plans to construct additional dams and canals, but for a variety of reasons, those projects were shelved. The key factor was economics. In addition to its mounting debt, California was also dealing with other problems like environmental challenges. California decided to put off new construction in the anticipation that the project's initial stage would be enough on its own. In the early years, the upgraded amenities surely made a difference. About two-thirds of the water collected by the system was distributed to urban inhabitants. The remaining water was used to irrigate orchards and farms. These water facilities, however, made life tough for a number of indigenous animals by obstructing rivers' natural flow. With all those dams and pumping stations getting in the way, Populations of salmon and steelhead trout, which swim up river during spawning seasons, fell after the peak. Due to everything said above, these fish are unable to reach their mating grounds. According to estimates, the entire system contributes around $400 billion annually to the state's economy. The state water project's current components, 
however, have begun to experience difficulties in recent years. There were fewer than 20 million people living in California at the time these components were initially constructed. However, the population of the state has doubled to 39 million people during the last several decades. The demand for water has increased as well, and the dams and canals are struggling to keep up. That explains, in part, why the state has experienced so many recent drought-related problems. Our water demands have grown much beyond what the system was intended to handle, according to Mike Waite, executive director of the California Farm Water Coalition. The water management system needs to be upgraded urgently because of the growing population. A short distance north of Sacramento lies a narrow valley surrounded by hills and rocks on both sides. With broad expanses of yellowish grass and clusters of plants and trees, the landscape is arid and scrubby. So, how will it be constructed? To fill in any gaps between the hills at the valley's edge, workers will first construct a number of dams. The two largest dams, located on the eastern and northern sides of the valley respectively, will be the Sites Dam and the Golden Gate Dam. These dams put together will cover the valley into a huge waterproof tub. They will then need to fill it. Typically, a river is dammed and allowed to overflow, flooding the valley. The Orville Dam was filled in this way. The Feather River was blocked by the construction workers, who then watched as the valley behind it filled with currents. The river keeps the valley filled during times of heavy rain, maintaining the reservoir's level for later usage. However, the valley where the location is located only has a few small creeks and no significant rivers. Because of this, a slightly different procedure will be needed to fill the new reservoir. The site's reservoir would not totally end California's droughts, but it would undoubtedly help, making this project worthwhile if it can be completed. More than two cubic kilometers of water, or enough to supply a year's worth of drinking water to hundreds of thousands of Californian homes, could be stored at the lake. California's largest river, the Sacramento, runs about 25 kilometers to the east of the valley. The state intends to draw water from the river during the rainy season, pipe it through towns, hills and fields, and then pour it into the valley of the Sites Dam. It resembles a huge water tap filling up a huge bucket. The water can be released once more during dry seasons, offering relief to adjacent areas. Although it's unknown whether this would truly occur, it is a big source of worry. If no one can afford to purchase the extra water, what good is it? Environmental organizations have also questioned the potential impact of the water pumping from the Sacramento River on fish migration. Material disturbance is inevitable when a dam is constructed to block an entire river, as the one in the Orville area. These pools would be fed from the site's reservoir, which would also maintain the water's depth and temperature for breeding the fish. People come first, but conserving other species has to be a goal as well. It's still possible that this project won't ever be completed. They haven't yet raised the capital necessary to construct this project. But given current proposals, it appears that the reservoir will be operational by 2030. Do you believe it will benefit California? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below, and be sure to watch our video on the Orville Dam disaster if you want to learn more about the State Water Project. We appreciate your time, and we'll see you in the next video.